Hello everyone, Reza here. Welcome to another how to video. In this one, I will demonstrate how to set up a technique for an object that will disappear into another object. So for us, the object A is the spaceship and object B is the portal that I demonstrated in one of my videos. So if I go ahead and turn off the visibility of my object A, you can see I have a simple portal going using particle system in Maya. And I would like this spaceship to go through this portal and vanish as it goes through. On a normal day, if you would like to do this, it's easy to put that on a pass and do it in post using After Effects or Nuke, that's a piece of cake. But sometimes you don't have access to those software packages. And that's the aim and idea behind this video to show you how to do this inside Maya, easy and quick. So back to our scene, I'm just going to turn off the visibility of our particle system because you cannot scrub back and forth with the particle system enabled. So for efficiency sake, I'm just going to turn them off. Now we can see this um, simple point A to point B keyframe animation is already in place and I'm ready to go. So the way that you do this is obviously through Hypershade. Now I would like to bring the Hypershell to the screen that I'm recording in. So I'm gonna go to layout, saved layout, and I believe one of them, Hypershade Perspective, is in charge of splitting the screen. I'm going to turn off the outliner so I have enough space for both windows. Obviously, if you have two monitors, then it's easy, drag one into the second monitor. Next is to assign a new material. I'm gonna use good old Lambert. The reason is every material that you think of has got opacity or transparency. So that's not going to stop us. So um, I'm going to call this one Lambert underscore opacity. That's good. Now let's bring that material in. So Lambert opacity, right click on it, graph network. And there we have our Lambert opacity for our spaceship. Now you can see the opacity channel is here. But of course, if you use a standard surface, the opacity is under geometry tab, same with render man and, and octane and even redshift, they all come with some sort of a transparency or opacity channel. So the technique or the implementation of it will be pretty much the same. Now the node that we're going to use to bring this opacity in use and make it more interactive is the ramp node. The reason I can't really use this right off the bat because it just makes the object disappear. But what I really want is not the instant disappearance. I want that to happen from point A into point B. So if I have that point A into point B, I want that fading effect to be gradual. And that's why I would like to use ramp for it. I'm going to get rid of that grease tool. And let's get to work. So all I need to do is press tab, type in ramp. We don't want projection or stencil. We want textures. We are not going to change to the placement node, which is in charge of rotating and offsetting your, your ramp. Going from out color straight into transparency. Now you can see already we see the effect. And if I go in here and change this slider, you can see how cool is that? It's just taking place right now. Now, um, you have some additional nodes to add to your tool set and make the result more stylized or creative, such as noise and frequency of it. And keep that in mind, everything is keyable here. So you have a lot of room to be very creative. For simplicity's sake, I'm not going to get into those type of things. Now interpolation, I would like to change that because right now without even changing anything, you're getting this fading out at the tip of this spaceship. That's not desired. So I'm going to go and set this interpolation to none. So we get everything back. Now let's have a look and see how we can keyframe this. If I move forward, so around frame 100, and you don't need to be accurate really unless you have an extreme close up shot from a very specific angle, frame 100 up to frame 
maybe to 30 would be where we want this to take place. So I'm going to go to frame 100 and keyframe the selected position, set a key. Oh, some display error, it's freaking out, but that's okay. Going to frame to 30 and then it's a good idea to just slide this back. Sometimes sliding it back right until uh, like selected position zero will freak out the application. So I tend to actually use a very slow number instead. And that kind of rounds it into zero. And with that, we're not getting any uh, kind of wacky result. So set key on frame 230. And again, you may say, Reza, why are we not seeing this on the time slider? That's easy. Just right click on the attribute, not on the value, on the attribute and go and see the ramp. You have access to time. Uh, you can change it here. You can have uh, access to the value and change it here. In fact, you can see I can now see the exact value I put into that attribute. Um, another cool thing that you can do is to change the interpolation, which I believe I need to do that. So if I click and play the timeline, you can see this happens beautifully and that's exactly what we wanted. But the thing is, I think I can do better by changing the interpolation of my in and out tangents to linear. So I'm going to change that to linear, copy the out tangents to linear. That's better. So you can see it's kind of more accurate now. And that's something I want. You really don't want ease in and ease out uh, in the middle of this fading effect. Otherwise, it kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a bit jarring. So let's play again. It's a bit laggy. So tell you what. What I can do, um, I can go to panel and can go to layout and single plane. And then I can bring the particles back and do a quick play blast. With that, we can see the correct pace and the accurate result. So I'm just going to pause the video and do a quick play blast and we will be back. All right, we're back. Let's have a look. Great. So another sort of trick that you can have under your belt in case if you're, I don't know, putting together a very quick and dirty previs just to show to the client or you don't have access to post-production software packages, you can do it really quickly inside Maya, get some feedback and for proper polished version, you can even either add to this technique and make it more complex or you can bring things on, onto a render layer and properly create this effect in either Nuke or After Effects or Fusion. So there are a lot of ways of doing one thing. This is just one method I would like you to have under your belt. You never know, this may come handy one day. So I hope you enjoyed this and use it in your projects. Thank you very much. And until the next how-to video, see you around.